folks, brothers and sisters, to this uh, edition of today's Muslim Challenge. Uh, Ahmadi Dat has been very popular. I mean, he's been dead for nearly 20 years. I think he passed away. Uh, I'm going to say the Lord struck him down, uh, or took his life in 2005. He suffered a massive stroke, and I believe that he was really uh, struck down by God for his uh, continuous blasphemies against the Lord Jesus Christ. But he's quite, you know, he's very, very popular. Uh, uh, even today with Muslims, they, he is very often their go-to guy, and uh, they claim that everyone was afraid to uh, debate him. And uh, quite frankly, in some of the debates I saw, uh, he was always picking the sort of the low-hanging fruit. Uh, and one of his more infamous or notorious debates was with an individual called Pastor Stanley, who I believe must have been a pastor in South Africa. I have no idea uh, who Pastor Stanley is. And uh, from the parts of the debate, uh, I saw Pastor Stanley didn't do very well. And, um, but Amity Dot decided he was going to uh, uh, school uh, Dr. Stanley on Greek. And so he gives uh, the impression to the audience that uh, he knows Greek uh, and is familiar with the Greek language. So I'm going to show you a clip right now, and then we'll take a look at it and find out exactly how well uh, Amity Dot new Greek. So let's watch the clip and then we'll come back and take a just take a look, have an ana analysis of whether or not he already did new Greek. Accepted. That's your system. In Hebrew and in Greek there is no such thing as capital letters and there's no such thing as small letters. And in Arabic also no capital letters, no small letters. But in your Western system you have capital letters and you have small letters. So there, the word the God stands for God Almighty. So we have the capital G-O-D, God. And the word was God. That second word God, in Greek, sir, is tontios. Tontios in Greek means a God. A God should have a small g. According to your system, a God means any God. That's not a proper noun. So you must have a small g. So I'm asking, why have you put a capital G again? Come on, explain. You are cheating somebody. First time, capital G, valid, acceptable. Second time, it should be a small g. Why have you put another capital G? You're creating a different meaning, that this is the God Almighty. A God means godly. Okay, so we've seen uh, Ahmadi Dot, and he ex has explained to Pastor Stanley and uh, the audience out there, and uh, you know, and trying to his, his very best to embarrass uh, Doctor or uh, Pastor Stanley. Very condescending, actually quite quite nasty, and uh, with his, his approach, and. Um, so let's look and see how much, uh, let's look at um, Amit Dadat and see whether or not he actually understood how the Greek language works. So let's read it. I posted it up here. Basically, an arche and hologos, kai hologos, in pros tom theon. Notice there is no uh, tom theos any place in this uh, uh in the Gospel of John, or in John 1, 1, and in the, in the entire Gospel, and I will show you that it is nowhere, uh, anywhere in the entire Bible. Kai, Theos, and Hologos. And this is kind of important, because Tom Theos is grammatically impossible. Uh, when uh, I now I'm not a Greek expert. I have uh, one semester of Greek. I, I actually even got a credit for it, and uh, uh, so that I understand that's not very much. Not an expert in the language. Not a scholar. 
But the first thing that you learn, after you learn the alphabet and how to pronounce a few words, uh, you learn, uh, you know, about Greek nouns. And Greek is an inflected language. In other words, uh, word order isn't terribly important. You know what part of speech a word is or how it functions in a sentence by the ending. And so, and the uh, definite article must agree with the noun. So you cannot have ton theos. And Amadidak kept repeating that. So let's move on. And I'll get out of the way here. So just give me a moment to um, move myself out of the way. So let's take a look at this, shall we? In Greek, you have the nominative which is the subject of the sentence, the genitive, which is relationship, uh, the dative, which is the um, indirect object, and the accusative. So let's read this together. Ha theos. It cannot grammatically be ton theos. It can, you have the genitive, which is to theo. You have uh, the dative, which is to Theo, and you have Tom Theon. This is how it, this is how the language works. So I'll pop back in here, and we'll wrap up here. So what I find so troubling here, what I find so troubling, is that um, this video is still out there. Uh, it's not as uh, it's not use as much as it has been because I think that he's been called out on that and it's sort of hard to call out a person who is no longer with us but Zakir Naik has also used the uh, same argument and he makes the same mistake and so what are the conclusions? Well the conclusions are that uh, these people are are totally ignorant of the Greek language or they're dishonest. I think it's a combination of both and they don't care because their, uh, their audience is, is other Muslims, and the only ones they are fooling are other Muslims. So my challenge to, uh, if you're a Muslim and you're watching this video, and by the way, if you're watching it on YouTube, it would really be great if you hit the like and subscribe. I really would appreciate that. But uh, really, you know, what can you say? I mean, you know, I, I pride myself on trying to have an honest dialogue with Muslims. And uh, I hope that people will no longer uh, use this argument uh, and that you will take a second look at Ahmadidat and Zikir Naik when they use this type of, uh, this type of deception. Because uh, what did he say, in the, what did, what did uh, Didat say in it? You know, you're trying to fool somebody. Be honest. Well, yes, be honest. Be honest with the text. And that is something that we seldom uh, see. Anyways, I, uh, as I always close that uh, with this uh, scripture verse for my Muslim friends and anybody else out there who is outside of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the Apostle Paul tells us uh, that uh, that Jesus has been given a name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every tongue shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You will bow the knee. You'll either do it in this life or you will do it in the next. You, bow, uh, you will bow the knee. And so if there is the opportunity uh, today to uh, confess your sins and bow uh, the knee and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Again, thanks for watching. Remember, Jesus Christ is Lord. And if you so mind, please uh, hit the like and subscribe if you're watching by YouTube.